G'day and welcome back to Star Citizen. Today we're taking a look at one of the most anticipated ships to come into the game recently, and that is the Drake Caterpillar. Now, it is a transport ship, but it is not just a transport ship, it can do a whole lot more than that. And one of the reasons for that is the segments here. If you look sort of where the middle of the radar is, these are little dividing sections. Each of these individual modules, as they're called in the middle here, can be swapped out, or at least that's the concept behind the ship. So you'll be able to configure the ship to perform various different roles. At the moment, we only have this variant, which is the full cargo loadout. But we also know they have a search and rescue variant with medical facilities and beds and treatment. We know they've got also a salvage version that has a chop shop as well as cargo facilities. And we believe there's also some sort of actual sort of pirating version because being a Drake ship, they kind of have this reputation for being pirate vessels. But let's get on to having a look at the ship itself. Now you'll see there's a dorsal turret on the top there and there's one underneath. Aside from a few fixed guns scattered around the place, that is it for the armament. Now given the ship was described as a fighting transport, some people aren't very happy about this. However, in my opinion, that is perfectly fine because whilst it may be able to fight, it is still a transport ship. You're not supposed to be operating on your own and going into hostile situations with it. You're supposed to have an escort. So we'll have a look at the front here. Now you've got these parking sensors. Now these are what people thought in the original concept art were guns. And who knows if they'll have any sort of different uses afterwards. But at the moment, they're just sort of there for show. They don't seem to actually do anything which is a shame. If we move on to the side here, you'll see it is in the Kovalex paint scheme, which is a cargo company within the game. And you'll also see these many segmented legs, which are what give the Caterpillar its name. Also, it appears the Caterpillar is slowly jittering along to the side on the pad, which is annoying. But yeah, you've got wings on either side, but we'll open up these pods because each pod opens sideways. So we'll just get into the right spot. Spot. Duck under the way and you'll see they fold out quite nicely leaving a big opening. Now if we open every single one of these you will see that it gives quite a lot of potential just alone on how they open up. There we go. So that is all these side pods open up so these are all the cargo ones. Oh, that one's glitched and that one's glitched. That's just an alpha. You can fix it by turning it on and off again because that is something that works in games as well as in reality as much as it is sort of a joke. So we'll do that for that one. And then this one. I think it works based on whether you're moving around on them. I'm not sure. Like I said, it's an alpha. Things will happen like this. But there we go. I'll open that one up again. See, that one was fine this time. But the front module will also open up. The front of the ship can also be changed. This is just the basic one. So, we'll just have to find the right spot. There we go. Pushes it out and then opens up. So, that is the ship entirely opened up. And it's pretty cool. Well, you can see they open quite a considerable way. And actually, that one's glitched worse now. See, it's still got the frames inside. Whatever, that's just how it is. Moving swiftly on, we'll duck under the wing here, and you'll see you've got this little pod thing there. That is actually the floor for a tractor beam station. We'll take a look at that later. Moving along here, we'll have a look at them sort of maneuvering engines on gimbals like the Freelancer and the Cutlass. However, they don't seem to move much in flight, which is probably good given they don't really, you know, Something this big shouldn't be moving around as fast as the Cutlass's ones do, let's be honest. But having a look closer, you can see the attention to detail on these. Especially on these main body here ones with all the exposed plating. I absolutely adore how this ship looks, by the way. It has that industrial rugged vibe that I just really like. As Drake has sort of got a reputation for being a no-nonsense manufacturer. And when we get to the interior, you'll see that carries out to the extreme. 
but yeah, let's keep going. Massive big landing gear under the back here. That is because, well, there's no under the landing gear at the back and all the front is the segments. But we'll move along here and you'll see the thing that makes this ship stand out from pretty much every other ship we know at the moment. You've got this here. This section has its own engines. And if we look under here, you'll see there is a little docking collar. Because yes, the Caterpillar has an offset command bridge, rather like the Millennium Falcon, so that instantly gets bonus points. But not just that, it is its own entirely independent ship. You see a gun docked to the side there. You've got the nice canopy for two seats. It's a two-story thing. There's another window down below. And yes, the whole concept behind it is instead of having escape pods, the entire crew can just get into this ship and the ship will detach from the rest of it and be able to go on their merry way, which is kind of cool. It's like a little escape craft and I can see so many uses for that. Unfortunately, it can't actually detach from the game at the present moment. However, I'm sure that won't be too far along given, well, it doesn't seem that hard and sure to do for the ship. The actual docking and undocking, on the other hand, might be a bit more difficult. So it's time to get inside the ship, I was going to say on board and inside at the same time. So you need to duck into here, there's an elevator. If we press the core elevator button here, we'll open it up, folds down nicely with great uh, hydraulic sounds. Step on board and go up by hitting the up button. Well, really just sort of hit the panel and either works. Watch the cylinders as they lift us up. And we are on board the Caterpillar. Straight away you'll see, unlike every other ship manufacturer in the game, the pipework and everything is all exposed. The insulation blankets hanging out. I don't know what these are, but they're sticking out. You've got an armory here for your guns, just as you leave the ship. And yeah, it has quite its own unique aesthetic to it, which is really nice. If we duck through the back here, this is the habitation area for the main center of the ship. You've got some sort of panel here, not sure what this one is for. Ducking over here, you've got a very sort of caravan looking four burner stove with a sink next to it. Really nice, some little basic storage containers. You've got the compulsory toilet and shower combination, which is always interesting to see. You've got the table in the center with screens for entertainment so you can watch music videos or whatever it is you want to watch. And then some bunks here. I can't actually remember if the Caterpillar's figures for its crew size have been updated. However, we have just the four beds in here and four beds in the escape pod slash command pod. So whilst you could theoretically have a crew of eight as a result, you'd be having to hot bunk, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it is a pirate ship and I'm sure that could work. That door leads into the first pod, but we'll come back to here later as there is a lot more ship to look at first. Going back through here, duck through the lower walkway, and then you go into the engineering access. These are, well, the engines or something, and they just look pretty cool. They look pretty much like marine diesel engines, and that is a nice aesthetic to them. You've also got a engineering station in the back here, so this is where the engineer will maintain everything. Going into this section here, that's how you access the lower turret. And going up here is a stairway that goes to the central corridor. We're not going to go up that stairway though, because we're going to take this ladder on the side, which will take us to some other more engineering spaces in the ship. So straight away, you've got this panel here for the component, which the doors describe as being the jump drive. So if you need to get to a hurry for a jump, like, you know, fix the hyperdrive sort of thing, that will be all from here. Go through the doorway into the power plant room. You've got some interesting design on the power plant. And I'm assuming again, you'll have to work here if something happens. And it's Juno Starwork, so that's an interesting brand and company name. Going into here, we have the server room. So if you have to hack the ship or repair any of the systems related to the computers, I suppose this is where you would do it, which is kind of cool. And then into here, we're back into the upper hallway, which you can see from here is led straight from the power plant, and then you go through here to the center. Now this is the area where, if I look down here, that's the stairwell we were looking up earlier, so I'm hopefully not confusing you. 
Through this doorway is the tractor beam room, or tractor pod, as I was going to say, which I don't know why I was going to say that. But this room is probably my favourite place in any ship at the moment in the game. I mean, just look at that view. You've got a spot for once where you can look along your entire ship in flight, and that station will just, I think, be one of the best ones to operate from. You'll operate from this panel here, controlling the tractor beam, and you can pull cargo or whatever into the cargo pods as they open out to the side. This leaves a way, obviously, for securing loot if you're supporting a pirate faction, or just in search and rescue or salvage, drawing stuff to the appropriate area. Ducking back through here, we'll keep following the central hallway, go through the airlock, and this takes us into the command pod, which has a nice view here. Now you've got the pilot seat, co-pilot seat, ducking back along here, you've got two rear seats, for whatever systems. We go downstairs, and once it gets down the ladder, you have your own living quarters again. We've got a shower, no toilet, unless you sort of want to just squat, but don't do that, that's gross. We've got four beds here, another four burner, another sink, little table here for your entertainment, and then we got this little operating station here, which I'm not sure what this one will be. Possibly guns, but it's hard to tell. But yeah, it's quite nicely laid out. There is another exit for the ship there. Not accessible at the moment, but it's there. We'll go back on up, climb back up the ladder, and I suppose we better take the ship off for a fly for the moment, at least whilst I'm here, and then we'll take a look at the modules themselves. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Your systems are online. I like that little announcement there. But yes, if we look down, straight away you'll see my one of my other favourite things of the ship, the great big red stop button in the middle of the control column. That is a nice touch. So if anything happens, that is your panic button. But let's take off, we'll go to the external view. We've definitely rotated a decent bit. And we'll just watch the takeoff. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll watch it from here. So we'll just lift up from the pad. The gear should retract and we'll be able to see just how the gear retracts, folds up nicely and locks into place with what should be, I assume, a sort of a click or whatever, but it doesn't do that at the moment. And yes, the Caterpillar actually handles pretty well. Just look at the detail here whilst we can. The overall asymmetric shape is nice. I'm not normally a fan of asymmetric designs, but I like this one. The engines especially look great. And if we duck underneath, you can see the turret there and the one at the front. Let's get moving a bit. So we'll get some power on. Uh, we'll just point along here so we fly sort of across uh, Port Olisar. There we go. Now we're going the right way. The Caterpillar has quite a nice engine sound itself, but it's distant, so you're probably not going to really hear it, especially whilst I'm talking. But yeah, flies alright, looks good too, and that is one of the main things for my ship. It's not the fastest vessel in the world, it goes from, hang on when I get back, it goes from 95 to, if I remember right, about 410 at max boost. So that's not terrible for a ship this size, and what can you expect really, it is, well, it's massive, it's over 100 meters long. The ship was originally described as being the evil twin of the Freelancer, which is about 24 meters long in the original design, but SIG themselves said that was a mistake and the ship should have been around the Constellation in size, the evil twin of the Constellation. Of course, the Constellation at 60 meters long is a lot smaller than how the Caterpillar has ended up being. It is the longest ship in the game currently. The Starfarer is bigger than it slightly in volume, but not in length. But yeah, it flies alright. It turns as you expect, maybe a little too fast at the moment. The offset alignment takes a bit of getting used to, but it's a nice bit of variety to the game. Going through the hallway now, we'll have a look at the rest of the ship. We'll start off by having a look at the EVA access room. That is the airlock on the top, so, you know, useful. And then you've got some access way here to the walkway. The modules have the central corridor lower down, and then they have this walkway on top. 
Now they have controls for operating the doors both from up and down. I just realized the door was showing as closed for some reason. That's interesting. But yeah, you can see you can open and close them here from both the top and down there. If you can see them, there's control panels down there as well. Actually, I'll just climb down and show you. So yeah, there, there's panels are there for operating. And you can see I've opened it up. That's actually a nice view of the control pod there. But with it open on both sides, this reveals some of the potential this ship has. I could see it being used as sort of a mini carrier of sorts, given yes, you can fit the Drake Dragonfly, uh, what's it called, sort of, oh, we lost the com link. The Drake Dragonfly motorbike space thing. I'm not sure how to describe it. Speeder, I guess, is the correct term. But yeah, we'll go back up here, we'll walk along through to the end of the ship, and then we'll come back down through the bottom. So remember, this is just the cargo pods. We don't have any of the other pods available at the moment, so we can't have a look and see what they're like. Keep going through. They're all the same, all glitching out and looking like they're closed when they're not. And then we go to the front here. This is where you have access to the turret, the upper one right there. And this is also where you can open and close the bow of the ship. So we'll close that up now as well. So you can see how it operates. Not sure why it extends the way it does, but well, it just does. We'll climb on down. And one of the interesting designs that was shown in an earlier version of the ship, uh, I've got the wrong way facing. But yeah, one of the original early designs, well, that's closed now, had the point where you would sort of have torpedo tube things like in the front here and you could like launch people on EVA directly out to supposedly accelerate search and rescue but also has the concept of catapulting dudes for boarding ships with. We haven't heard anything about that since though so possibly that's been scrapped as an idea which is a shame as it is a pretty cool idea. But yeah, you could easily fit another couple dragonflies in here as well. So there's a lot of room for putting things in. Also a lot of nice little attention to detail like exposed wiring there. I expect there'd be plenty of fire hazards in a ship like this. But it's Drake, so they're supposed to be cheap in game. We'll go back through all these modules here. Take a bit of time to get through them, of course. And we arrive at the final one, which has a bit of a larger airlock door, and you're in the habitation once again. So hopefully I've not confused you too much about the layout of the ship. Oop, and we've been catapulted out of it because I went too far out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the Drake Caterpillar. It's not available normally in sales, it's only available in special ones. But it's an interesting ship, it is one I actually own as I think it has so much potential for things to do in the game. But as we watch my ship sail off into the distance at quite an alarming rate, and Port Olisar being a mere blip in the distance there, I'm going to be consigned to the void. But that was the Drake Caterpillar, I'm Denadon, and unlike me, safe landings. Thank you.